For many years, we used computer-generated spaceships every time we had to do a science fiction project. But eventually we hit a sort of glass ceiling where things just weren't looking real enough. When we started working on Space Lasers, our science fiction film which so far hasn't actually gotten made, we decided we'd have some fun by building the spaceships as practical models. To do this, we had to collect a lot of trash. Broken electronics were great, old toys, any type of plastic packaging, storage bag zippers. The first few models we made using entirely free materials, but then we started purchasing model kits and toys to use for kit bashing, as well as some plastic things from Home Depot. Cardboard is going to be one of the most important elements. We basically start by creating a bunch of cardboard boxes and gluing them together. We can rearrange the boxes to see what the best configuration is. Our best model was figured out in CG first, so that we had all the measurements of what the cardboard pieces would be. Any sort of can works well for engines. Cardboard is also good for cutting out panels. If you're using thin cardboard like a cereal box, it's good to triple up on the thickness so that the glue doesn't make them curl up. Put some drinking straws, coffee stirrers, or toothpicks for piping around the panels. A really great thing for panels are floppy disks. Here we covered much of the surface in floppy disks and used blue electrical gain boxes from Home Depot, which are very cheap and give some good bulk. When you're ready to paint, use gray spray paint on the entire thing, then a light misting of black, and on top of that a lighter color to dirty it up. Then you could go in and add graphics, or use a brush to weather it. Now when real boys shoot models, they use a motion control camera. This is a big thing that costs one gajillion dollars. Here's how we do it. We've got a piece of wood with skateboard wheels that we run on PVC pipe. We've been using this as our dolly for years. If we use a measuring tape and take a photograph every three inches of track, we've got an image sequence that keeps a constant speed. Of course, this only gives us one second. This is where most of our daily heart attacks come in. We're going to use the time warp effect to slow this down significantly. Here we've gone all the way down to 5%. The method is pixel motion. This is essentially morphing. It's interpolating between frames to create new ones. It's an incredibly memory intensive process. It's going to crash on every click at this resolution and probably make the project completely unrenderable. Sometimes you're also going to get artifacts that you're going to have to roto out or hide in shadow. Given all that, we've still had a good amount of success with this method. For starfighters, they're going to have to pull off crazy maneuvers during dogfights, so we're going to have to take a different approach. We built very simple models of fighters and then shot them from all angles. We then took those images and mapped them onto simple geometry, giving us the freedom to fly the fighters in 3D space. We used a separate pass for the engine flares, and here you go, an entire squadron of fighters doing something that we couldn't have actually shot with our fake dolly. Even though the movie of Space Lasers doesn't exist, you can still watch the many months of painful work that went into it in the Space Lasers visual effects reel.